praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We welcome you. We welcome you. Facebook Live, we welcome you. Teleconference, we welcome you. We're going to invite you to stand if you're able for our call to worship. And before we do our call to worship, I'm going to ask you to do something. You know, the royal way. I want you to turn to the left, turn to the back, and give everybody a world wave this morning. Maybe give them a hello with your eyebrows. Psalms 121 says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve thee from evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and forevermore. The word of the Lord, you may be seated. Thank you. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will I will myself, I will make myself, I will insist that I will rejoice and be glad in it, and we certainly have so much to celebrate on this third Sunday in September. The Lord just, I love about the Lord, he's a spontaneous God. Can I get an amen? Y'all might be not talking about, so he changes things up. It seems like there, you know, we have baptism, but then we have different baptism, but we are so thankful today that we have an opportunity to baptize a brother and a sister. Amen. And we are thankful that we have uh, you know, Reverend Timothy uh, Powell who will be uh, baptizing and give God praise again for this, this unique opportunity of him baptizing his children. Amen, amen. So we just give God all the glory, the honor, and praise. Anybody want to just go ahead and give a praise, worship for him, to him right now. In anticipation of what the Lord is going to do. Amen. Take me to the water. We baptize you now. 
In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. a little song of inspiration. I want y'all to sing along with us too. Come on. Yesterday, a man said to me, he said, how can you smile when your world is crumbling? Now I said, this is my secret. When I want to cry, I take a look around and I see that I'm getting by and I hold on. Hold on. Change is coming. Change is coming. Hold on. Hold on. Don't you worry. Hurt, hurt, hurt. Said hold on. Hold on. Cause you can make it. You can make it. Hold on. Hold on. Everything. Some people like to worry. Hey. Some people like to hide. you want to do, but when it don't work out, here's what you ought to do, you just hold on, hold on, things coming, coming, hold on, hold on, don't you worry, worry about it. Hold, on. Hold, on. hold on, you can make it, hold on, hold on. everything, and when the trouble
life can weigh you down. When it does, just say a prayer. Ask God to lead, direct, and guide you. After you say that prayer, you start your journey. Put a little tune in your head that goes like this. Yeah. Say la da. extra touch. That was very good. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes. Give a little hand clap. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And welcome again to anyone that might have come in late. Welcome Facebook Live. Welcome teleconference. Before we go to the Lord in prayer, I want to share a testimony. It's always good to hear what God is doing. Puts a little, little pep in your spirit. We have a longtime friend in Lakeland, Florida. And in May, her 37-year-old son was on his way to work. About 8.20, I think the news said. The train was, the arms to the train track was down. Some reason he thought he could go around and beat the train. Well, he didn't. He was injured severely. Spinal cord, brain trauma, and other situations. When they got him to the hospital, the doctors told his mother, Take him home, make him comfortable, or put him in hospice until his demise. But guess what? Yeah. 
She did not believe that report. She took it to God. She said, my son will live and not die. She prayed, called on some prayer warriors. And within a week, he was moving a little bit. He was all tubed up and she uh, would send us pictures of how he was doing. And the nurse said, I've been in the trauma unit for 19 years. I have not seen anything like this. The next report that we got on her son, Corey, he was standing up beside his bed, no tubes. Last week, she sent another report. She videotaped him walking down the hallway with his, with his walker. why we don't ever, ever stop praying. We don't look at our circumstances. You better look at God. Get your eyes off the mountain and look at the mountain mover. Hundred of a shunder called Oh, glory. Glory. This testimony may be for somebody specific, but it's for all of us to remember the power of God. He can do all things, but fail. I've been in worship all week, ever since Monday, just worshiping, praising God, listening to sermons and just meditating before the Lord. And I'm always nervous about getting up because some people don't understand the worship. And then I said, God, I'm not making any excuses because this is the house a prayer, the house of worship. You've been too good not to give you worship, not to give you praise. We all have a testimony. Some may be a little timid, but as long as you praise and thank God, acknowledge Him in your own little prayer closets. I had to learn how to get out of my timidity. I had to learn how to just focus on God because it is to you, Lord. Like he told Jeremiah, don't look at their faces. It's to the glory of my master. Andoroso Dashika. Bless you, Lord. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Just go to your secret closets right now. Give him a praise in your own way. Worship him in your own way. Master. Master. Abba. Daddy. Our Lord and our Savior and our Redeemer. The strength of our life. We praise you this morning. 
We thank you this morning, first of all, for waking us up, for leaving strength into our bodies, and you gave clarity to our minds. We knew our surroundings. We were able to walk and to hear. We thank you, the Lord, for all the comforts that you have provided for us. Some of the things that sometimes we take for granted, the air and the water, clean clothes, even the conveniences of a wash machine and dryer that we can just go and put our clothes in or the finances to put gas in our cars. We thank you, dear Lord God, for all the little things that we sometimes take for granted. Father, we praise you this morning as we prepare, dear Lord God, to hear the word of God from the man of God. Prepare our hearts, Lord, to receive the word this morning. Father God, we ask your anointing to break every yoke, every chain, every bondage, every lie, every distortion that the enemy might try to bring as we worship. We know that he's a distractor, but Lord God, I pray that we keep our focus on you. That we remember that we came to worship you. That we leave all those things behind, Lord God, that we have to tend to. Our first Priority is to you. Father God, just let a veil fall over this place. A veil of worship. Father God, because we know that as long as we're in your presence, you said there's fullness of joy. Regardless of the things that we're going through, we can still have joy. We can still have peace. Lord, we come to this altar and we cast all our cares on you. Father, some of us try to carry this heavy load and you said to cast it on you. To cast all of our burdens. And sometimes, Lord, we're wondering why we're spinning. We wonder why we're frustrated. We wonder why we're anxious because we haven't obeyed what your word said. To leave it with you, to take it all to God in prayer. Father, I thank you for the testimony of my friend, our friend. Thank you for our own testimonies, Lord God. Father, we're going to keep on praying. My husband and I have been praying for 17 years for my son who had an injury to his back. Sometimes he's in such pain that he has to go to the hospital. He's on strong drugs. Sometimes he can't work. But Lord, I remember you telling me to look in the midst of what I'm doing. Sometimes we want to see the end. But you said, see me right here. And you taught us, Lord God, how to look at you and what you're doing right in front of us. We can't see down the road, but we trust the one who has it in his hands. So we thank you for what you're doing in the midst of our lives, our family lives. For how you are working because you're always working. To thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord God, that he's able to have a part-time job. Thank you, Lord, that he was able to get married and have a, a family. Thank you, Lord God, for the times that you 
brought him through to days that he feels good. We thank you. We thank you for what you're doing right in our eyes view. We're never going to stop praying. Because our prayers are communication with you that connects us, that builds our relationship, that draws us closer to you. And you say you draw closer to us. That gives us the empowerment to go on a little bit longer, to stand strong in the midst of the storms of life. That gives us our footing. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that you are a healer, a deliverer, a restorer, a multiplier, an increaser. We thank you, Lord God. We pray over every prayer request, every prayer need. Father God, because cancer, diabetes, heart disease, MS, MD, chronic illness is not too hard for you. We must trust you, word, and take you at your word to walk in all that you have for us. Regardless of what's going on in the world, in the government, in the White House, in the Senate House, regardless, God is still in control. And all you want us to do is to trust you. Our little minds can't understand. We can't figure it out. We don't need a new blueprint. We just need to hold on to your unchanging hand and walk in the way that you direct us. Father, we cover each and every prayer request, every broken heart, everyone who is not saved, they're still walking in darkness. We pray today will be a day that they recognize that they need Jesus. We pray, dear Lord God, that those who might be addicted. We pray, dear Heavenly Father, for those that run to substance to find relief. Father, we pray that they will realize the only peace they will find is in you. We pray, dear Lord God, for marriages that need to be restored, families healed, relationships, forgiveness, to know that we won't be forgiven unless we forgive, to let it go, to free ourselves. We pray, Lord God, for the abuse and the abuser that they would stay their hand. A spirit of conviction would fall so heavily on them. They would begin to weep and say, I'm sorry. We pray for the one who's been abused, oh Lord God. Cradle them in your arms, Lord. Rescue and recover them. Father, we pray. For whatever is burdening anybody today that they will leave it at the altar and know that it's not insignificant, it's not too big for our Father, who is a good, good Father. And he does the very best for us, even when we don't understand. Father, we thank you for this day this magnificent day, we're going to honor you. We're going to rejoice. We're going to give you our very best because you deserve it. You looked down and you saw the need that we have. We thank you, dear Lord God, for our pastor who will come with a word from heaven that every heart will be ready to receive, every spiritual ear sharpened, Lord God, that the word will bring peace to the troubled soul. 
joy in our heart. Father, that we can go out and tell a dying world that God is good and he never fails and he loves you just where you are. So, Lord God, let us be the living epistle as we walk today and whatever day you give us that everyone sees Jesus in us. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. We love you with our whole heart. And we will never, ever stop praying. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The almighty name of Jesus. The magnificent name of Jesus. Our Lord and our Savior. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and praise him. Go ahead and praise him. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All glory, all honor, and all power, all glory, all honor, and all power, all glory, all honor, and all power belongs to him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Certainly we thank God. Give God praise again for our men's choir, our musicians. Thank you so much that we've gathered here today again to celebrate the goodness of Jesus for he is so good and he keeps showing himself strong each and every day. Uh, we're so thankful to be here today. I want to welcome everyone that's in the sanctuary. If you're here today and this is your first or second time, uh, we want to recognize you. If you're here today, won't you just please stand right where you are. If you are a visitor, first or second time, just stand where you are. Give God praise. Thank you. So happy to have you all come today. And please come back and see us again. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Again, we welcome everyone in our Facebook uh, live audience as well as our teleconference it is so good to be here today, and the Lord is a good God. Just a few comments before we continue on with our worship and praise. I want to remind everyone that we are still praying for the Wilson family, the uh, Maddox, as well as uh, the Mason family uh, in the passing of Joanne Wilson. We will have her homegoing service on tomorrow, 12 o'clock, 1230, for the visitation, and then 1 o'clock for the funeral we are if we can we will continue to serve them and and call upon the lord to give them comfort um also want to mention today this is our second sunday where we will be giving to the hurricane uh ida uh survivors and those who are trying to rebuild their lives i want you to know again we did send the check off to support the haiti uh earthquake uh victims on um, this past week and now we're working to get our funds together that we will be a blessing to those who have been impacted by Hurricane Ida. If you have loved ones, if you have friends or uh, people that we need to help, please make sure you get that information to the office because the first thing we're going to do is meet the needs of those that are connected to Oak Grove and then we will be meeting the needs as we send funds to our state uh, to support again this, uh, this need. Um, and then um, I think that's all I really want to share today. Uh, again, the Lord is good and he's good. Somebody say what? All the time. Amen. Amen. We are so thankful that we were able to baptize today uh, again to Mia and uh, Jamel. And we're thankful again for the entire uh, Powell family. And uh, we want all of the Powell family to stand. Amen. We are so thankful to have this family with us. And uh, we have, we, you know, we just kind of want to show love. This is what Oak Grove is all about. Anytime we have an opportunity to show love, we want to do this. And Tracy, we want to say thank you for completing new members class. And there's a certificate for you. Amen. Uh, uh, Minister Tracy, Reverend Timothy, uh, again, the certificate in the completion of new members class. You're a full-fledged member of Oak Grove Baptist Church. And then we have Tamia. Uh, we were so glad to baptize you. So you got a baptism certificate and a uh, certificate of membership. And last but not least, give it up for Jamel. Jamel's got his certificate as well for baptism. Uh, and so thank you so much. And then we're going to get with Fanny later. We, Fanny just completed today, but we're so thankful. Give God praise for this family one more time. You all may be seated. You may be seated. Is, uh, is uh, Shirley and uh, Larry Riddick here today? Shirley and, and Larry Riddick? I don't see them today. All right. Well, we'll give them the certificates when we see them. Amen. Let the church say amen. Somebody say amen like you really mean it. Let us continue our worship and praise of the Lord.
Good morning, Oak Grove family and friends. We're so glad that you've connected with us, The Grove Without Walls, where our pastor is Reverend Dr. Franklin D. Watkins. If you are attending, listening, or watching us for the first time, we would like to extend a warm welcome to you. Whether you're watching us on Facebook Live, listening on the teleconference line, or attending in person, we would like to thank you for joining us. We appreciate each one of you. We pray that you will have an awesome worship experience with us today. Now, it is time for our announcements. Please continue to send your prayer requests to the church office or to Minister Carol McFarley. Mark your calendars for this week's events. Men's Bible study tomorrow evening at 7 p.m. via teleconference. On Tuesday, midday Bible study at noon and intercessory prayer at 7 p.m. via teleconference. Christian education session, unit three, Wednesday at 7 p.m. And on Saturday, intercessory prayer at 7 a.m. Then Sunday school will be at 7 p.m. via teleconference. Our Wednesday night Bible study has resumed with our Christian education fall session entitled Experiencing God. These classes are being held on Wednesdays through December 8th at 7 p.m. in person in the sanctuary, but it's also available on Facebook Live, Zoom, and Zoom teleconference. Masks and social distancing are required if you attend in person. Please refer to the newsletter or the link on the announcement tab on the website for the Dowlin information. On this Thursday, September 23rd at 7 p.m., there will be a very important music ministry meeting. This meeting is for the entire music ministry, including Unity, Men, Youth, and Hymn Choirs. If you are not already a part of the music ministry and would like to join, you are invited to attend this meeting as well. If you are unable to attend, please contact Brian Williams or the church office. The Grief Share Fall Session has begun and is being held on Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in classrooms 20 and 21. All sessions are in person. Grief Share is a Bible-based Christ-centered ministry that helps people who are grieving the loss of a loved one to heal. You can register at griefshare.org. Use zip code 28075. A warm welcome awaits you at Griefshare. Oak Grove is looking to hire a musician. The primary responsibilities are to play keyboard and organ, provide music for worship service, and lift the name of Jesus in praise music and song. If you are interested or know someone who is, please contact the church office for a job description and more information. The United Missionary Baptist Association's annual fall session will take place on September 26th through the 30th. The session will be held in person and virtually. Our very own pastor will be providing an inspirational message on that Tuesday night. More information can be found on the UMBA's YouTube channel and Facebook page. Attention new and returning college students for this 21-22 school year. Today is the deadline for your college care forms. These forms can be located on the table in the church foyer. We are in search for someone to teach our youth some step routines. If you have the skill or talent and would like to share it with our youth, or if you know someone that may be willing to volunteer their time and talent, please contact Minister Michael Stafford or the church office. Homegoing services for Sister Joanne Wilson will be tomorrow here at Oak Grove. Visitation at 12.30 p.m. Services will begin at 1. This ends the announcements. Have a blessed, safe, and productive week. Good morning, Oak Grove family. Here in the sanctuary, Facebook Live, and on teleconference, 
We just praise God for this day and for his many blessings. It's now time for our offering. If everyone will stand with your offering in your hand, we will go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you with humble and grateful hearts. We come thanking you for your many blessings, thanking you for blessing us with our finances, with our health, with our peace of mind, with the love, Heavenly Father. We just thank you and praise you. We ask that you just bless the offerings that were provided this week, Heavenly Father, that will be provided today and in the future, Heavenly Father. We ask that you just bless each one that was able to give, Heavenly Father. We ask that you bless the ones that weren't quite able to give this week, but know they will give as they receive, Heavenly Father. We just thank you for just asking us to give the 10% and allowing us to keep the 90. And Heavenly Father, you have blessed O Grove Soul with the 10% that has been given. We praise you and we glorify you. We ask that you give the leaders of O Grove the wisdom and the knowledge to use the gifts that we are receiving for your kingdom down here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We ask that we will be uh, presenting our offering in sections. We will do section one and section three, but if everyone will face the center aisle, and, and section one and section three will begin starting at the rear, and then after they're finished, we'll do section two and section four. So if the ushers will just let them, uh, the last row know when to come. Thank you.
Good morning, church. Our scripture rest lesson for today will be taken from the Book of Lamentations. We'll be reading from the New King James Version. Ask all that are able to stand if you will stand for the reading of the word. All right. It appears on the screen, and I hope that those that are viewing have been able to find their places. We're going to start at verse number seven. He has hedged me so that I cannot get out. He has made my chain heavy, even when I cry and shout. He shuts out my prayer. He has blocked my ways with hewn stone. He has made my paths crooked. He has been to me a bear lying in wait, like a lion in an ambush. He has turned aside my ways and torn me in pieces. He has made me desolate. He has bent his bow, his bow, and set me up as a target for the arrow. He has called the arrows of his quiver to pierce my lions. I have become the ridicule of all my people. Their taunting song all the day. He has made me drink wormwood. Last verse. He has also broken my teeth with gravel and covered me with ashes. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Good morning, Oak Grove. Safety first. That's what we always talk about in the church. Safety first. We need to take care of one another and take care of ourselves. Good morning to those in the Facebook land. Good morning to those on teleconference. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Isn't it great that we have a God that we can carry everything to? The small things, we can carry them to him. The big things, we can carry them to him. The things in the middle, we can carry them to him. No matter how big we think it is, our God is bigger than that. How small or minor it may seem, our God is bigger than that. I say thank you for God. And I say thank you for what God has done for us. All the testimonies, all the, uh, the love and kindness that he constantly shows towards us on a daily basis. Isn't it a blessing? I don't know how we can just sit there and not say much of anything. You know, I, I kind of look at it like I'm a football lover too. But I watch those fans, and they're cheering for everything. But we can't seem to get excited about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes it just has, needs to come out. You know, and I thank God for the opportunity. Let us go to God in prayer. Most precious and thou art God. Once again, Heavenly Father, I just want to say thank you for allowing us to see yet another day. And thank you for the many blessings that you bestowed upon us, the simple things in life that we so often take for granted. For the air that we breathe, I say thank you. For the sun that shines, I say thank you. For the rain that falls, I say thank you. For the grass that grows, I say thank you. For the butterflies that fly around, I say thank you. For the birds that sing, I say thank you. For the dogs that howl, I say thank you. Lord, just thank you for those little things and those things that we so often take for granted, Heavenly Father. 
And Heavenly Father, right now, I want to remember those that are in the hospital, in the nursing homes, or the various homes, Heavenly Father. Just ask you to allow the healing process to continue and just allow them to have another blessed day, just doing more things that are pleasing to your will and to your way, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, I just want to say a special prayer for my pastor, Pastor Watkins and First Lady Watkins, Heavenly Father. Continue to strengthen them, continue to guide them, continue to lead them in the way that you would have them to go. Just doing more things that are pleasing to your will and to your way, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, right now I just ask you to touch the entire Oak Grove family. Whether they're here in the sanctuary, whether they're on Facebook, or whether they're on teleconference, or maybe they weren't able to join us today, Heavenly Father. Just ask you to continue to bless them, Heavenly Father. Continue to touch them. Continue to lead them in the way that you would have them to go. Just doing more things that are pleasing to your will and to your way, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, right now, I just ask you to continue to watch over our children, Heavenly Father, as they go back to school. Watch over our educators, Heavenly Father, as they'll put in the school systems, Heavenly Father. Just ask you to put your arms of protection around them. Let no harm or danger come to them, Heavenly Father, and just allow them to be able to come back home safely, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, I just ask you to continue to watch over our young men and women in the military here in the United States and abroad. Just ask you to put your arms of protection around them. Let no harm or danger come to them, Heavenly Father, and just allow them to be able to come back home, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, just ask you right now to touch those families that those loved ones may be overseas, Heavenly Father, or may be in another state, Heavenly Father. Just ask you to continue to lift them up, continue to guide them, continue to lead them in the way that you would have them to go, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, I just want to say thank you for all you do, Heavenly Father. For all you've done for Oak Grove, Heavenly Father. For what all you've done for each and every one of us, Heavenly Father. And just ask you to keep on blessing us, Heavenly Father. You've been better to us than we deserve, Heavenly Father. And I just want to say thank you for it, Heavenly Father. Thank you for the additions that are joining Oak Grove. Thank you for the persistent members, Heavenly Father, that keep coming, Heavenly Father. Just looking for a word from you, Heavenly Father. Just thank you for everything, Heavenly Father, that you continue to do. I ask you to continue to strengthen me, continue to guide me, Heavenly Father. Continue to lead me in the way that you would have me to go. Just doing more things that are pleasing to your will and to your way, Heavenly Father. I ask you right now to continue to watch over my wife and my family, Heavenly Father. Continue to lift them up, continue to guide them, Heavenly Father. Continue to lead them in the way that you would have them to go, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, right now I ask you to touch those that I don't know to call by name, Heavenly Father. Just ask you to continue to strengthen them, continue to guide them, Heavenly Father. Once again, thank you for all you do and all that you continue to do. You've been such a blessing, and I want to say thank you for it. This is my prayer in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. These words to this song here, let us just put it in the atmosphere right now. The Lord is my life and my salvation. Whom shall I be? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my life's salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. Oh God. I will wait on you. I will trust. Thank you, Lord. I will trust in you. The Lord is my life's salvation. Who shall I fear? Who shall I be afraid? The Lord is my life's salvation. Who shall I fear?
goodness of the Lord. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain
in rehearsal the other night. We didn't rehearse this part. But after listening to the song, all right, all right. it meant so much to me. Yeah. Remembering when I was a little boy sitting beside my mom and she would sometimes strike out a song saying, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I don't know about you, I don't know about you, but I'm going to trust. In the Lord Until I Till I die I will Trust oh, oh, In the Lord I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna Trust
Praise the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. Praise God. Praise God. I will treat everybody right. I will treat everybody right. I will treat everybody right until I die. We thank God for those old hymns sometimes that takes us back to those days when we didn't have piano, we didn't have drums, we just had the voices and you had the stump. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God for worship. Thank God for praise. Thank God for worship. Go ahead and worship him. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. He's worthy 
of the praise. And that's the reason that we came today is to give him what he's due. And he's due all the glory, all the honor, and the praise. Amen. Let's give God praise again for this day, for this men's choir and our musicians, for our ushers, for our greeters, for our sound team, for our health care, and all of those who are here today. Certainly, we want to honor the Lord today, and the Lord is good. And it seems like that's been the theme all this uh, this worship service is uh, how good the Lord is. And we're so thankful that the Lord has blessed us today with a word from the Lord. And we're going back to Lamentations. And if you would join me in chapter 3 in verse number 17, that's Lamentations chapter 3 in verse number 17. Thank you, Deacon Hill, for reading that first portion of Lamentations. We're going to look at Lamentations chapter 13 and verse number 17, and it's going to be read out of the New King James Version. That's Lamentations, giving you time in teleconference to get the Bible. Lamentations chapter 3 and verse number 17. Hear the word of the Lord. You have moved my soul far from peace. I have forgotten prosperity. And I said, my strength and my hope have perished from the Lord. Remember my afflictions and roamings and the wool worm, the wormwood and the gall. My soul still remembers and sinks within me. Somebody say, then I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Because his compassion faileth not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. Here it is right there. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. I'm going to put a tag on this message today. Press the recall button. Press the recall button. Press the recall button. Would you bow your heads with me? God, we thank you. We bless you. We thank you, God, for your presence today. For we feel your presence. We see your presence. You have already shown yourself strong. Now here we come today, God, because we need to hear a word from you. There are those who are troubled. There are those who are distressed. But we know, Heavenly Father, that you always have hope. Now hide this preacher behind your cross. Let your people see you. You be elevated. You be magnified. Do, Lord God, what you desire today in this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Let all the saints of God say amen. Lamentations is a very interesting book of the Bible that is written by Jeremiah. And the word lamentations in itself means to lament or to express grief. But I believe to appreciate lamentations, we must know something about the author Jeremiah. Jeremiah was born in Anathos which was a small town three miles northeast of Jerusalem. His father's name was Hilkiah. Jeremiah's ministry extended from around 626 B.C. to 586 B.C. His ministry uh, coincided with the reign of the last five kings of Judah. Jeremiah was a contemporary of other great prophets like 
uh, uh, Zephaniah and uh, Habakkuk and Ezekiel and Abadiah. And they were in Jerusalem and Judea and Jordan during the time carrying out their ministry, but then something tragically happened. And that tragedy was the Babylonians came and conquered the people of Judah. The Babylonians came and destroyed what they would never thought they would ever see. He just, they destroyed the temple of God. They broke down and burned the walls and they burned the houses and the land. For 40 years, Jeremiah preached to the nation of Judah. Passionately, he pleaded with his people to repent from their sins and to stop their rebellion against God. He preached that if the people did not refuse or did they refuse to repent, if they refused to stop their rebelliousness against God, God had no other choice but to express and exercise his hand of judgment. Yet, despite all that Jeremiah preached and taught, despite his steadfast efforts and his fervent uh, pleas, guess what, y'all? Nobody listened. And let me tell you right now, we are living in a time just like the time of Jeremiah. We are just like the people and we are in the same boat. We're living in a society that doesn't want to listen to God. In a society that doesn't want to believe God, nor do we want to respect God. As a matter of fact, uh, God is showing us that he is displeased with our sinful ways. I wish I had one witness in the house. He's displeased with our wicked ways. He's displeased with our disrespect. There has never been a time in my lifetime that I have witnessed so much disrespect. Oh, can I talk about it here? Males are disrespecting females, and females are disrespecting males. Husbands are disrespecting their wives, and wives are disrespecting their, their, their husbands. Children are disrespecting their parents, and parents are disrespecting their children. Rich people are disrespecting the poor people, and poor people disrespecting uh, 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 rich people. Students are disrespecting their teachers, and teachers are disrespecting their students. Democrats are disrespecting the Republicans, and Republicans... We are living in a time where there's an all-out disrespect. And when God is displeased with us, he shows his hand of judgment. And I didn't come here to tell you what I what, uh, what uh, prophesied, but I believe that God has peaked, shown a little bit of his hand. That's why we have what we call the pandemic, COVID-19. That's why we have wildfire. We got a lot of stuff going on just at the same time. Wildfires are going on in, in California. Hur uh, hurricanes from the Gulf are still coming up. Uh, uh, earthquakes from Haiti and we are still viewing wars and rumors of wars not in a foreign land but right here in our own land because we are warring against whether we should wear a mask or not wear a mask that's the foolish thing I ever heard in my life we're warring against whether we should take the vaccine or not take the vaccine. Can I just share something one more? I, 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 this is not even in my notes, but I, sometimes I get concerned about the fact that people get so concerned about what's in their bodies, yet they smoke dope, they drink a whole lot of alcohol, they smoke cigarettes, they, take, they eat stuff. That, come on now, you want to get real. Something uh, is going on. But I believe it's because of the fact that we're living in a society that is full of trouble. But let me remind you that God is rooting for us. God is cheering. You know, we got a great cheerleader in heaven. God is rooting for us to turn some stuff around. That's why his mercy and his grace, I've already said something right now, he's still holding back because he is rooting for us. Well, preacher, can you tell me where he's rooting for us? Well, I can tell you right here in 2 Chronicles 7, 12, it says, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard thy prayers. Anybody? 
been praying? Anybody been praying? And he said, I have chosen this place to myself for my house of sacrifice. That's you right there. That This place is right here. He said, if I shut up the heavens and there is no rain, there is no love, there is no respect, and if I command the locusts to devour the land, hate and, and, and disgrace is going on. And if I send pestilence upon the earth, he said, but if my people who are called by my name, I, if, if you would just humble yourself and pray and seek my face and turn from your wicked ways, he said, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive your sins. And now guess what? I will bless your land. However, before we can appreciate Lamentations, we must know something about Jer Jeremiah. E even though Jeremiah was a man of God, he was a prophet of God, even though Jeremiah tried his best to live for God, Jeremiah had to suffer along with these, all these other disbelieving knuckleheads that are doing their own thing. I can't get no help. Y'all go, go ahead and praise God. Look what Jeremiah had to go through. Jeremiah was opposed through his life in ministry. He rejected. He was rejected by his family and rejected by his neighbors. He was rejected by the so-called false prophets and the priests. He was talked about by his friends, and he was talked about by the kings of Judah. He was imprisoned. He was deprived. He was improvised. He was thrown in a citrus or a big old tank for many, many weeks, and he was threatened. His life was threatened, and after preaching to the people for 40 years and they did not turn to God. He saw God's hand when Babylonians came and crushed the city. And I, I, and then to make it even worse and Jeremiah got old. He didn't he didn't excel, uh, uh, exile uh, to uh, Babylonia but he, he was he ended his last days in Egypt. But I, I believe Jeremiah could relate to uh, a Langston Hughes poem that I'd like to share with somebody here today. Anybody have heard the poem Mother to Son? Anybody have heard Mother to Son? I believe there's some people here today, maybe you are struggling. Maybe you are going through some trials and some tribulations. I believe this poem is here to help us. Y'all want to hear what the poem says? It says, well, son, I'll tell you, life for me ain't been no crystal stairs. It's had tacks in it and splinters and boards turned up and places with no carpet on the floor. Bare, but all the time, eyes been climbing and reaching and landing and turning corners and sometimes going in the dark where there ain't been no light. So, boy, don't you turn back. Don't you sit down on the steps because you find it hard and uh, kind of hard. Don't you fall now, for I still going. I still climbing, and life for me ain't been no crystal stair. I need to tell somebody here today, get, get up from there. Get up from that place of sitting down because God is not through with me yet. Somebody go ahead and give God praise. To appreciate limitations, you must step back in Jeremiah's world and see what Jeremiah saw. Jeremiah saw the Babylonians coming, and they crushed the the, uh, the city of Jerusalem. Yeah, there were people at one point. It was a it was a, a a thriving city. There was a lot going on. There was great economics and great military and cultural affairs. But all of a sudden, now the city is abandoned like a widow. And now Jerem uh, and Jerusalem now, which was once a great city, is now laying in ruins and they are as slaves to the Babylonians. Well, now, since we have gotten a picture of what Jeremiah saw, I think we're ready now to appreciate Lamentations. Anybody want to walk through Lamentations a little bit here today? In chapter 3, I think we can learn something because I think what he's trying to show us uh, that we will have a, a, a visualize what Jeremiah saw. And now we understand what Jeremiah felt. Here it is right here. Jeremiah was in a state of depression. I got to stop right there because I know you got your nice clothes on today and nobody knows the trouble you see. Nobody knows what you've been doing, what you did last night. But in reality, somebody in here has been in a place of deep, dark distress. 
And uh, this is where Jeremiah find we find himself. And Jeremiah begins to describe what this uh, what this feeling feels like. In verse seven, he says, "He has he has hedged me so that I cannot get out. He has made my chains heavy." And what Jeremiah is trying to say, uh, because of what I have seen, I've been weighed down by this misery. I've been weighed down. I got bondage on me. And maybe somebody feels like Jeremiah today. You are doing the best you can trying to deal with your sickness and your pain. And you are constantly in pain. Every joint in your body is inflamed. You have lost your appetite. You don't know, uh, you don't want to eat. And you are barely walking without losing your balance, falling down. But I need somebody to say to yourself it's time to press the recall button somebody go ahead and say it Pro profess it it's time to press the recall button as a matter of fact i need you to help me preach this message when you see this bible i want you to say it's time to press the recall button let me see you try to come on somebody here right here okay we're ready to walk we're ready to rock with jeremiah jeremiah says in verse number eight and he says when i cry uh, and, and shout uh, he, he shuts out my, my prayers. Jeremiah felt that his prayers were not being answered by the Lord. And he began to call on the Lord, but in the midst of his suffering, but he didn't feel like God was responding. Anybody feel like Jeremiah? I can't get no help in the house here today. God, but you've been crying out. You, and see, like the more you pray, the more you feel the pain. The more you call on the Lord, the more your co-workers and your people talk about you. The more you cry out to the Lord, the more that addiction try to push you into a place of getting high and getting and drinking but I need somebody to go ahead and say somebody say it's time go Jeremiah says in 14, says, I have become a ridicule of all my people. They sing taunting songs all day. Jeremiah says, they, they, they ridicule me. They, they mocked me, uh, these wicked people. And, and they, uh, they see my suffering, but they don't come to try to calm me and, or see sympathy. Instead, they ridicule me because they think that, yeah, you're supposed to be the God. You're supposed to be God's boy. And God ain't done nothing to you. Look at you. You're going through the same stuff that we are going through. Anybody here? I feel like Jeremiah because you know you 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 may feel the ridicule and the, the slander coming from your family coming from your friends and your neighbors and you you know you are a bold believer you uh, the co-workers know that you are a person of God family members know that you are the person of God neighbors know that you are a person of God you know what they're saying behind your back if you since you so sanctified I can't get no help in the house since you so sanctified why hasn't God healed your body since you so holy rolling why hasn't God come to your rescue since you are so righteous why haven't God delivered you out of your pain somebody gonna go ahead and walk with me but I came to tell somebody go ahead and say it with me I, it's time to what Amen, amen. Jeremiah goes back and says, verse 17, he says, you have moved my soul far from peace. I have forgotten prosperity. And Jeremiah feel like his peace was stripped. He felt like he was constantly in turmoil, and he felt that he was stripped of all of his possessions. Yeah, what Jeremiah was explaining was that when the Babylonians came, they took all of his stuff. You know that stuff that we all uh, are, are so happy to have, that new car, that house, the clothes, and whatever? When the, when the enemy came, they took all of the stuff. I can't get no help here. All that stuff that we've been sweating, trying to pay for. He, he took all of the stuff. And, I, I, and so here it is. I believe what Jeremiah was feeling is that he felt a sense that he was all alone. But somebody go ahead and, and, and let, let somebody know, guess what, y'all? What, guess what time it is? It's time to do what? And I believe that this is what Jeremiah is trying to teach us today. Maybe uh, you feel like Jeremiah. You are down to your last measure of hope. You are at the end of your rope of helplessness. You are, your back is against the wall of de despair. But guess what, y'all? It's time to press the recall button. We're preaching, how can I press the recall button when I'm sick and when I'm diseased, when I have addictions, when abuse is going on, when my marriage is broken? How can I... Press the recall button. I'm glad you asked. Anybody want to know how? How can I press the recall button? Well, let me tell you what recall definition of recall is. Recall says to bring, to bring a fact or event or a situation back into your mind. But I think there's a spiritual definition here. Let me give you a spiritual definition. It is to bring truth back into your mind. 
Amen. I believe that's what Jeremiah said. And, and this is what Jeremiah did. He shifted his situation back to God's truth. He shifted his focus back to God's truth. He shifted his mindset back to God's truth. Here it is right here in verse 21. This truth, I know, I know it's not written in the Bible that way, but I need you to understand what I'm saying. He says, this truth I recall to my mind. Therefore, I, I have hope. In words, Jeremiah pressed the recall button of truth. And when Jeremiah re recalled in his mind, guess what? He had hope. When Jeremiah recalled in his thinking, guess what? His hope began to build. Can I go ahead and tell your brothers and sisters, somebody come on and get, get to go with me because I believe God's getting ready to break some burdens today. I believe God's getting ready to, to, to do some uh, breaking of bondage today because all we need to do is recall what? The truth. So Jeremiah wants to teach us how to press the recall button. How do you press the recall button when you're in a dark place? How do you press the recall button when you have in a depressed state or in a woe is me state? Well, I believe that I need to tell somebody, yes, people of God can be depressed. And let me tell you what, when you get depressed, that don't, it doesn't mean that God takes his love away from you. You're still a believer. You're still a Christian, but you're in a place now where you are depressed. And I'm going to say right here, especially there have been so many things going on in this world at the same time. There's so much negativity happening right now. I know I got some people in here that are feeling what I'm preaching. Uh, health issues are going on along with relationship issues. Uh, we're losing loved ones. We got the pandemic going. Food prices are going up. They're talking about inflation are getting ready to get high. Uh, there's negative news on the TV and put all that together. We got teenagers involved in drive-by shootings. I need somebody to pay attention to what's going on. They shoot into the houses of those who are innocent and three-year-olds are dying. I can't get no help here. A 14-year-old died this week. Y'all better pay attention. I I need somebody to understand that there's some stuff going on and it will cause you to have some level of distress. But Jeremiah teaches us how to press the recall button. Anybody want to know how to press the recall button? I'm getting ready. I'm just about to. Y'all, anybody going to press that recall button with me? Here's what he says in verse, uh, uh, the first thing he tells us if we're going to press the recall button. And Jeremiah says, press the recall button and know that God is still full of mercy and compassion. Verse number 22 says, Now, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because of his compassion, uh, his compassion fails not. So he says, as a stop recalling the dark places and the things that are not that are not working and start recalling the truth. And the reason that we can still, we are still here. Listen to what I'm saying here today. The reason I'm still standing here is because of the Lord's mercy. And that's that's some truth right there. The reason that we are not consumed by the mess that is going on around us is because what? Of the Lord's mercy. The reason that we are standing and sitting here today has nothing to do with how good we are, but it's because of what? God's mercy. Stop recalling uh, the negative and start recalling the truth. The truth of the matter, the reason I'm here today is because of the Lord's compassion. Anybody know anything about the Lord's compassion? He has, he has blessed me. He keeps giving me compassion. And that's the reason that I'm here. So I'm recalling today the, that, that God is full of mercy and God is full of compassion. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and de declare in my life, my life is getting better right now because of what? The mercy and compassion of the Lord. I need to tell somebody my health is getting better. My health is getting better right now. Why? Because of the mercy and compassion of the Lord. My finances are turning around. Around. I wish somebody would go ahead and declare for your own self. Why? Because his mercy and his compassion is uh, with me. And we'll say it this way. And here's the truth that I'm trying to share with you. Psalms 136 says, Oh, give thanks for his mercy. What? Endures forever. But I believe there's something else Jeremiah says in verse, uh, uh, the next thing he says in verse 23. And the point he's making is press the recall button and know that the Lord is still faithful. Somebody say he's faithful. 23 says, great is your faithfulness. Stop recalling the misery in your life and start recalling the truth of the fact that the Lord is what? Faithful. The Lord is faithful. What does that mean? The Lord will do just what he said he will do. 
The Lord is not man like man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he shall repent. But he says God is what? Truth. The Lord will be there no matter how bad or how good the situation uh, is, is going to be because God is true. The Lord will never forsake you. He will never abandon you. He will never desert you. Why? Because he is faithful. You can depend on God. Somebody go ahead and give God praise. You can depend on God. You can't depend on people. You cannot depend on the loved ones. But you can always, somebody say always, depend on God. Here's the truth is Isaiah 43. When you pass through the waters, he says, I will be with you. And when you go through the rivers, he says, it will not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, he says, the fire will not do you no harm. As a matter of fact, you can walk in the fire and come out and no, there ain't no smell of smoke on you nowhere. Amen. So I'm so thankful for what he's saying here. But there's something else Jeremiah says. We got to press the recall button and know that the Lord is still my portion. Somebody say he's my portion. Amen. Verse 24 says the Lord is my portion. Therefore, my soul says, therefore, I hope in him. And I'm glad Jeremiah used the word portion. Let me tell you why. Because portion is a, it means a part of a whole. It's a part of an amount. It's a piece. It's a slice. And what Jeremiah is trying to tell you, I can't tell you what your portion is. You got to go to God for yourself. But he says, I got a portion. And guess what? You got a portion. He says, when things get rough, we can go to God and we can show, we can let him know, I need a portion. I can't get no help here. See, what I'm trying to tell somebody, I, I recall this commercial. It says, sometimes I feel like a nut and sometimes I don't. Some armor and joy has nut and guess what? Mounds don't. And every once in a while in my day, I feel like a nut. And I need three or four slices of his love. I can't get, I don't know about you. Every once in a while, I, I, I get to a place where I need about five, give me the whole pie. In the words, I need the whole thing, Lord, because I got trouble in my way. And I need to know that the Lord is with me. And so I'm thankful that he says, he says, uh, but you can always get your portion because God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. So the final thing to press your recall button, you must know that the Lord is still good. Somebody say the Lord is good. That's been the theme of the, of, the message, of, the, of the service all day. But he says in verse 25, he says the Lord is good to those who wait for him. He said he is good. It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. So I came to tell somebody as I close this message, the Lord is good. Say it with me. The Lord is good. You got to say it until you get into your noise. Somebody say, the Lord is good. Can you go ahead and declare how good the Lord is? Can I tell you right now, the Lord is good. He's good in the morning. He's good in the noontime. He's good in the midnight hour. As a matter of fact, I came to declare somebody that the Lord, uh, he's still, uh, he's still good. And I, I'm so glad that he's good because the Lord is good when I got plenty. And uh, the Lord is good when I don't have nothing. The Lord is good when, I ha when I'm well. Uh, and the Lord is good when I'm sick. The Lord is good when I have peace. Uh, and the Lord is good uh, when I got a trouble is in my way. My Lord is good when I got friends. And the Lord is good uh, when the friends become enemies. The Lord uh, is good uh, when it's good when bad things are happening. And the Lord uh, is good when good things are happening. Uh, can I tell somebody, uh, it doesn't matter what I go through. Uh, because my God, uh, he's still, uh, he's still good. Uh, I don't care what happens in your life. Uh, you ought to go ahead and say, thank you, Lord. Uh, no matter what is going on in my body. Uh, no matter what is going on in my family. Uh, no matter what is going on in my church. Uh, I thank God that he he's still good so I say he's good and so my last point it got really good at this point when I began to look at the text 
And I said, I got one more thing to share with somebody. I, I need you to go ahead and think about how good God is. Because I think there's some Jeremiah's in here that's going through some hard times, that going through some troubles. Jeremiah began to look at this thing. He went through all of what God wasn't doing. But he began to recall in his mind. But there was something that he said in verse 23 uh, that changed me. Uh, there was something he said in verse 23 uh, that got my attention. Uh, can I tell you what he said? Uh, he said, they are new every morning. Uh, I, I don't know about when you want to shout, but I'm so glad uh, that I don't have to worry about mercy tomorrow. Uh, because they are new uh, every morning. Uh, I can depend on his compassion. Uh, because they are new uh, every morning. I can depend that he's going to be good today. Uh, he's going to be good tomorrow. Uh, he's going to be good next week. Uh, I'm so glad uh, that God, uh, he is good. Uh, he's good. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm so glad. He's good. And that's when Jeremiah looked at all the situations going on in his life. That's how he concluded it. That's how he turned the corner. He said, you know what? He's still good. And I think that's something that we need to think about. As long as we live in this life, we're going to always have troubles. Just go ahead and take a breath. Breathe. As long as we are living, there's going to be somebody who don't like you. Go ahead and take a breath and breathe. It's going, to be, it's going to be all right. And I believe the Lord wants to let us know that there should always be the idea that God is good. Why should I feel discourage why should the shadow come why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion a con and friend is he his eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he, he, he watches, oh, he watches me. Give God some praise in the house. And so I sing because I'm happy. I sing, I preach, I teach because I'm free. Whoa, is I is on the sparrow and I know and I know and I know and I 
I know he watches. You go ahead and finish it. Me. Give God some praise. Maybe you're here today and you need to know this God. This God, all you have to do is press the recall button. When you press the recall button, put some truth in your situation. Put some truth in your tears. Put some truth in your sadness. Put some truth in your depression. And would you come back and realize, because I'm still living, his mercy is with me. His compassion is with me. He's, got, he's given me a portion every day. I know that because I got food on my table. If you're, here, if you're here today, you want to know this Lord Jesus as we open the doors of the church. We want to invite you to please come right now. Come just as you are. No need to make any special preparations. The Lord says, come. If you need to be baptized, come. If you are looking for a membership of a church, come. If you want to be here under watch care, please come. Come now just as you are. For those that are in Facebook Live, please call this number, 704-455-2763. We'll be happy to get your name and your number, and we will follow up with you. If you have a prayer request, call that number. We do have a minister ready to minister to you right now. And so if there's anyone, everybody please stand all over the building as we open the doors of the church. And as we are standing, you are, this is your time to come. As we're standing, we're also giving this time a time of prayer. This is the altar call. If you're here today, if there's been something that's been said, we want God to seal it in your heart and your mind. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for those who are here, those in Facebook, those who teleconference. God, we come to the throne of grace boldly because we have needs. But God, you know all of our needs. Not only do you know our needs, we also know that you, you have already supplied all of our needs according to your riches in glory. Now we ask your blessings now be upon your people. Whatever they are facing this week, whether that be with a job, with a person, we pray that you would give them strength, give them boldness, give them faith to walk by faith and not by sight. God, we pray your blessing be upon every family. Every family member, we pray for blessings. God, we speak healing. So many people are going through COVID. So many people are going through other sicknesses and disease. We speak healing upon your people today. And then there are people that need to be restored. Their relationships are all messed up. God, be the restorer in our hearts today. Meet every need. Heal, deliver, and set us free. In Jesus' name, we pray that all the saints of God say amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. You can remain standing. We are getting ready to close out with our prayer and a benediction. So glad to have everybody come again. Thank you. If you've come today, uh, we are so glad to have you come. Let's now prepare for our closing prayer and our benediction. Lord God, here we are again at the end of this service, but we know we're never at the end of your love. We're never at the end of of your grace and your compassion. We're never at the end of your portion. So we ask your blessings be upon all of those who are here today, those who have heard this word. Let this word resonate in their hearts, minds, and souls. Let them, let them know, God, that you are for us all. Give us peace as it passes all understanding. Let us have great hope because our hope is not built on things on this earth but they are built on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let the church say, let the church say, let the church say, May the blessing of the Lord be with you and go in peace.